Good morning, everyone. This is Uma Priya from Erod Sangundar Engineering College. I am working as assistant professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Erod Sangundar Engineering College. First of all, I welcome you all for this session, which is sponsored by the AACT Prerna Stream. This scheme, it is specifically designed and working for the helping of the SCST students for their higher education preparation. So once again, I welcome you all for this session and I hope you all will get the clear idea through this session. And in this today's session, we are going to discuss about the fluid properties of the fluid and this topic it is lying in the subject fluid mechanics so before going into this session or before going into the discussion of the question part we'll just go through the some theoretical part which we already studied in the fluid mechanics. So first thing, what is fluid and how it does or how it differs from the solid? Yes, definitely the solid and fluid both are in different character. We can classify the substance all the materials as two different stream one is solid the other one is fluid the solid materials are tightly packed the solid materials as uh, the solid molecules are tightly packed but this fluid substances this fluid substances or loosely packed so in molecular wise in molecular arrangement wise the molecules are loosely packed in the fluid the molecules are tightly packed in the solid and one more thing the forces acting in between the solid and fluid the forces acting in between the solid molecules are high when compared with the fluid. So generally the liquid and gases are coming under the fluid. Generally the gases and liquids are coming under the fluid stream. So second point, the flow behavior of the fluid, it varies from the solid. The solid, it does not move or flow easily. The fluid definitely it will flow very easily in most of the places without the help of the external force also the fluid it will flow. For example, if we spill the water, if we spill the water on the surface, definitely the water it will take their own path and it will spread on the surface. So that is one kind of example. So the fluid, both liquid and gas, it has the property of easily flowing. Then third one is the fluid, it does not have any specific shape. The solid, it has the specific shape once if we mold it. But the fluid definitely if uh, the solid it reaches the solid uh, shape or solid uh, structure definitely the solid it will not get the another shape very easily one thing we have to break it to make that small uh, that one as the smaller one otherwise we have to melt that solid and to make that one to another shape but in fluid, no need of having any such kind of activities. Only the fluid itself, 
it ha it does not have any shape it will get the shape of the container wherever we store so first thing is example if we take the water 100 ml water in water one water bottle that 100 ml water it will get the shape of the water bottle the same 100 ml water if we transfer from the water bottle to tumbler then the same 100 ml water it will get the shape of the tumbler so these are all the main three differences between the fluid and solid first one is first one is molecular structure and forces then second one is flow behavior then the third one is shape then third one is what is fluid mechanics yes the study of fluid behavior it is coming under the fluid mechanics so the fluid mechanics it is the branch or study it gives the detail about the fluid behavior so that is nothing but the fluid mechanics so all together whether the fluid is in the rest condition or in motion condition that motion itself with or without the application of the external force all together we will study in the fluid mechanics so only we are classifying the fluid mechanics as three major categories one is fluid statics fluid dynamics and fluid kinematics and our syllabus also it it is just separated in terms of the fluid statics dynamics and kinematics only so fluid statics again the study of the fluid behavior when the fluid is at rest position that is nothing but the fluid statics fluid dynamics the study of the fluid behavior the study of the fluid behavior when the fluid is in the motion condition both the dynamics and kinematics both the things are giving the explanation in terms of the motion only but with and without uh, help of the our uh, application of the external force it is classify it is different uh, distinguishing so first one is fluid kinematics the fluid kinematics it is the study of the fluid behavior when the fluid is in the motion but without the application of the external force fluid dynamics again it is the study of the fluid behavior when the fluid is in the motion condition with the help of the external force then next one is uh, we can classify the property as the three major categories one is geometric property second one is flow property then third one is fluid property under the geometric property we will discuss about the length breadth width height depth area volume everything we'll discuss in the geometric property so based on the length whatever the property we are going to study that all the things are coming under the geometric property flow property again motion position only the flow property it will be mentioning yes the fluid motion only it gives the uh, it gives the explanation it gives the explanation about the flow property one is acceleration and velocity acceleration and velocity are coming under the flow property angular velocity angular acceleration uh, those things also coming under the flow property so what is the velocity what is the acceleration again the velocity it is nothing but the change in distance with respect to the time right and then again angular velocity again change in the radians with respect to the uh, time so uh, for the velocity we have the unit as meter per second for the angular velocity we have the unit as radian per second same like this acceleration change in the velocity with respect to the time so the acceleration unit is meter per second squared angular acceleration unit is radians per second squared right so all the things are coming under the flow property then next one is fluid property fluid property the fluid behavior like density viscosity all the things are coming under the fluid property we'll discuss briefly about the fluid properties here mass density weight density specific volume specific gravity 
viscosity surface tension all the things are coming in the uh, portion of the fluid properties so first thing we'll see what is mass density definitely we all know that the density it is the ratio between the mass and volume so mass density it can be defined as the how much mass it is occupying how much mass of the fluid is occupying per unit volume so the mass density it is denoted with the formula mass by volume it denoted by the symbol rho for mass the unit is kg and volume the unit is meter cube so the si unit of the mass density is kg per meter cube then next one is weight density so in terms of mass we'll have here weight so weight density it is denoted by the symbol w and it is defined as the how much weight of the fluid it is occupying per unit volume of the fluid so the weight density it can be written as weight by volume so the si unit of weight is newton and si unit of volume is meter cube so the si unit of weight density is newton per meter cube third one is specific volume specific volume again it is the reciprocal of the mass density again it is the reciprocal of the mass density so 1 by rho is nothing but the specific volume v so the si unit of the specific volume is meter cube per kg meter cube per kg so while defining the specific volume how much volume of the fluid it is have it is having in the uh, it is having in the per unit mass per unit mass that is nothing but a specific volume then fourth one is specific gravity specific gravity it is the ratio between the mass density of the given sample or given fluid with respect to the mass density of the reference fluid if we consider the weight density for the bo for both the systems we'll take like a uh, weight density of the given fluid with respect to the uh, ratio between the weight density of the given fluid to the weight density of the reference fluid okay given sample okay given fluid we know then what is reference fluid is for the uh, fluid which is in the liquid condition the reference fluid is water for the given fluid in gaseous condition the reference fluid is air so both the things we can use based on the uh, given sample condition so liquid means water and gas means air so all together the specific gravity it is nothing but the ratio between the density of the given sample to the density of the reference fluid right so density divided by density density divided by density it does not have any unit so in the specific gravity unit is nil the unit of specific gravity is nil then the next one is viscosity yes the viscosity it can be defined as the resistance offered by the fluid layer on the adjacent fluid layer so that is nothing but the viscosity so that is nothing but the viscosity viscosity it can be denoted by the symbol it can be denoted by the symbol mu mu again it can be expressed in terms of in terms of shear stress and shear strain so this one only will uh, uh, go through in the newton's law of viscosity again the newton uh, he uh, states that he states that the shear stress is the shear stress is directly proportional to the shear strain the shear stress is directly proportional to shear strain right so shear stress again we will write in terms of force by area so force is directly proportional to area force is directly proportional to change in the velocity and force is the inversely proportional to the 
change in the distance all together we will get the formula as tau is equal to so tau is directly proportional to tau is directly proportional to du by dy then if we remove that proportionality constant we will get the uh, tau is equal to mu into du by dy that mu is nothing but the velocity sorry viscosity or proportionality coefficient proportionality coefficient that proportionality coefficient it, it is called as viscosity so the formula for the viscosity is viscosity mu is equal to tau divided by du by dy viscosity equal to shear stress divided by shear strain shear stress divided by shear strain the unit of viscosity is newton second per meter square newton second per meter square the si unit of the viscosity is newton second per meter square and if we go into the mks units this is denoted by the unit it can be mentioned by the unit poise and if uh, we can classify the viscosity as dynamic viscosity and kinematic viscosity dynamic viscosity it is nothing but the viscosity what we discussed here kinematic viscosity it is the ratio between the dynamic viscosity to the density of the fluid it is the ratio between the dynamic viscosity to the density of the fluid so the kinematic viscosity it can be denoted by the symbol nu nu is equal to mu divided by rho nu is equal to mu divided by rho the si unit of the kinematic viscosity is meter squared per second meter squared per second the mks unit of the kinematic viscosity is stroke so most probably we will have the units in terms of uh, newton second per meter squared or uh, meter squared per second only but if we get the uh, problem in terms of poise and stroke definitely we have to convert that unit to the si unit then only we have to start the problem solving okay okay then next one is surface tension okay based on the cohesion and adhesion property based on the cohesion and adhesion property the top surface and the side walls of the fluid layer definitely it feels some kind of tension when compared with the uh, middle portions so the surface tension it occurs on the top surface or side walls of the surface so it is the uh, it can be denoted by the symbol sigma it can be denoted by the symbol sigma and it is directly related with the uh, pressure uh, intensity of pressure acting on the surface so only for each and every system based on the wetted section or the outer area the surface tension uh, formula it will be varying the unit of the uh, surface tension is newton per meter but the surface tension uh, formula it will vary for the each and every system system based on the system is whether it it will be like a water droplet or a air bubble or a, whatever the system we consider the next one is fluid statics Flu uh, in this fluid statics portion specifically we will discuss about the two laws we will discuss about the two laws one is pascal's law and the other one is hydrostatic equation pascal's law pascal he states that the pressure acting on the all sides of the system it is equal on the all sides of the system it is equal so only he mentioned like p1 equal to p2 equal to p3 here p is nothing but the intensity of pressure intensity of pressure but if this uh, system it will be uh, applicable for one system means that if this formula is applicable for one system means that system it should be in the rest condition then only this pascal's law it will be applicable so pascal's he states that if the system is in rest position so only we are discussing under the fluid statics if the system is in the rest position there is no motion right so all the sides pressure action on pressure acting on the all the sides are equal so there is no much variation so only he mentioned that p1 equal to p2 equal to p3 
then if we come into the hydrostatic equation he just modified a little, uh, small portion in the pascal's law okay the uh, fluid is in the rest condition uh, okay p1 equal to p2 equal to p3 even though the fluid is in the rest condition the fluid is stored in the vertical column definitely the fluid weight it will be having an it will be giving an impact on the fluid layer which is lying below that one so the hydrostatic equation he states that it states that the weight of the fluid it dominates on the other uh, pressure terms on the below lying layers so the pressure in, uh, in based on the hydrostatic equation it can be uh, mentioned as rho g h here h is the uh, height of the fluid system so if we consider the top layer then h it will be calculated from the top surface if we taken as the bottom layer as the datum then h it will be uh, calculated from the bottom one so p is equal to rho g h rho is nothing but the density of the fluid g is acceleration due to gravity so vertical system means definitely the uh, gravitational force it is having it is giving the main uh, impact on that so only we are considering the rho g h to get, calculate the pressure value so for each and every depth the pressure value it will vary based on the weight of the fluid element then the next thing what we will discuss in the pressure uh, sorry fluid statics means one is pressure so what is pressure s the force acting on the unit area is <coughs> that is nothing but pressure the force acting on the unit area is pressure so pressure it can be denoted by the symbol capital p and the formula is p is equal to f divided by a p is equal to f divided by a right so the unit of pressure is newton per meter square the unit of pressure is newton per meter square pressure again it can be mentioned in another term also intensity of pressure so how we can calculate or how we can measure the pressure nowadays we have the mechanical pressure gauges to measure the pressure so wherever we go to the plant we will get the pressure uh, measurement gauges only okay but in most of the lab sites we will use the <coughs> manometer to measure the pressure we will uh, use the manometer to measure the pressure so manometer it is nothing but the glass uh, capillary tubes and it will uh, sorry small size uh, u tubes it gives the uh, measurement of pressure very easily okay and before going into that we'll discuss about the different types of pressures one is absolute pressure then the second one is atmospheric pressure third one is gauge pressure fourth one is vacuum pressure so what is absolute pressure so the pressure whatever we feel okay the pressure whatever we feel and wherever we go we will feel some amount of pressure right so all the pressures are calling it as absolute pressure only called by the name of absolute pressure then what is atmospheric pressure again we can't feel the pressure which is below than the atmospheric level right this atmosphere it is having this some so value of pressure if we goes below that one we can't feel that very easy right so in most of the situations we are dealing with the atmospheric condition pressure only so only we are particularly can uh, studying this atmospheric pressure this atmospheric pressure this atmospheric pressure in most of the cases it will be considered as the datum line reference line okay then if we take water as water as the uh, calcul water for the calculation of the pressure measurement then this head it will be denoted in the term of water head and then if we use mercury mercury head like that we will get it but 101.3 or 101.4 kilo pascal is the atmospheric pressure value right then <coughs> positive gauge pressure positive gauge pressure again this is the pressure value which is 
higher than that of the atmospheric pressure. So the pressure value, the absolute pressure value, which is having the higher value when compared with the atmospheric pressure, that is nothing but the positive gauge pressure. So positive gauge pressure is we try to uh, write in the mathematical way. <coughs> In the positive gas pressure, it can be written as absolute pressure minus atmospheric pressure. But negative gas pressure, this is the pressure, this is the pressure which is having the lower value when compared with the atmospheric pressure. So only while writing the va vacuum pressure, we'll negative gas pressure, we'll write it as atmospheric pressure minus absolute pressure. So both the things are giving the relationship between the absolute pressure and atmospheric pressure only. But the positive gas pressure or gas pressure, it is the uh, pressure which is having the higher value when compared with the atmospheric pressure. Vacuum gas pressure, it is having the value when compared with lower value when compared with the atmospheric pressure. Then if we come into the this, uh, questions part, first one is, the fluid property due to which mercury does not wet the glasses. The fluid property due to which mercury does not wet the glasses. Mercury does not wet the glasses. While reading this statement, definitely we'll choose the assertion as the answer. Definitely we'll choose the assertion as the answer, right? Okay, then one more thing, read the question very clearly. The fluid property due to which mercury does not wet the glasses. So in this, the property, fluid property, what are all the fluid property we have? One is mass density, second one is weight density, third one is specific volume, specific gravity, viscosity, and uh, surface tension, everything, right? So here, addition, if um, addition, no, we don't have any property, but with respect to the addition, we have one fluid property, right? So surface tension. Surface tension, again, while discussing the surface tension part, we mentioned the term cohesion and addition. Based on the addition property only, the outer surface, it will feel some kind of tensions we mentioned, right? So that is nothing but the uh, uh, answer for this first question. So the fluid property, so the word clearly mentioned fluid property. So the answer, it should be lying in the fluid properties only. So option A and B in that, that to surface tension that is specifically uh, considering the assertion as the one of the major parameter. In, uh, okay, so option A, surface tension is the answer for the first question. Second question, laminar flow of a Newtonian fluid ceases to exist when the Reynolds number exceeds. Laminar flow, laminar flow of a Newtonian fluid ceases to exist when the Reynolds number exceeds. What is Reynolds number? Yes, what is Reynolds number? S. Yes. it is the ratio between the inertia force to the viscous force. Inertia force to the viscous force, both the Things are force, force, so the Reynolds number, it does not have any units, so only it is coming under the dimensionless number. So the Reynolds number, based on the Reynolds number, we can classify the fluid flows, right? So we can classify the fluid flow as laminar flow, transition flow, turbulent flow, based on the Reynolds number values. Am I correct? So, if the Reynolds number lies below the 2100, that is coming under the laminar flow. If the Reynolds number exceeds 4000, that is going for the uh, lam sorry, turbulent flow condition. If the Reynolds number lies in between 2100 to 4000, that flow is transition flow. That flow is transition flow. So here read the question very clearly. 
laminar flow of a newtonian fluid ceases to exist when the reynolds number exceeds so laminar flow condition right so check the answers one is 4000 2000 and 1500 3000 so we can choose 2000 and 1500 but ceases to exist ceases to exist just to start just to start so what is the answer option b is option b 2100 is the answer for the second question laminar flow of a newtonian fluid ceases to exist when the reynolds number exceeds 2100 option b then third question when the momentum of one fluid is used for moving another fluid such a device is called such a device is called one is momentum what is momentum momentum is nothing but the force into velocity force into velocity how much force is required to move that uh, fluid for the particular velocity so that is nothing but the momentum right so momentum of one fluid so one fluid layer momentum it is used for the another fluid movement so that kind of system is what one is jet pump fluid blower acid egg and none of this option d we can choose all the three answers are wrong so we'll discuss that one later first we'll go into the option a b and c option a jet pump here in jet pump the uh, what is it the air is used the air is used to make the movement of the uh, water and that to the water layer again based on that high force it will move, make other uh, water uh, layer also to move one is first thing a jet pump second one is blower here we we'll use the uh, motor to make the uh, gas to uh, flow and acid egg also we will use the uh, that uh, fluid system to make that move from the air movement only so first thing jet pump blower acid egg in this first fluid air it will help to make the movement of the water and water again it will make the movement of water so the first option a is the answer jet pump in acid egg and blower, the motor only it is used to make the movement of uh, fluid. So that is not the right answer. But in jet pump, again, air, water only it is uh, used for the making the movement of the another fluid. So the jet pump option A is the answer. Question number three, when the momentum of the one fluid is used for moving another fluid, such a device is called jet pump option a is the answer question number four the normal stress is the same in all directions at a point in the fluid when the fluid is stress what is stress again stress it can be defined as the force by area right so force by area shear stress shear force divided by area compressible stress compressible force divided by area right so the normal stress that is nothing but force by area is the same force by area again we might have studied in different terms as force by area what is that force by area yes pressure right pressure we can uh, define it as force divided by area right force divided by area so this stress and pressure all the things are same only so pressure is the same in all directions at a point in the fluid so where the pressure it will be same where in which condition the pressure it will be same is based on the pascal's law based on the pascal's law uh, when the fluid is in the rest condition, the pressure acting on all the sides are equal in a fluid system, right? So, we'll uh, come into the answer part. When the fluid is non-viscous, 
okay so viscous what is viscous again the fluid it is having the viscosity high viscosity that is viscous fluid so the fluid it is having the lower viscous or no viscous uh, behavior that is non viscous right so the fluid is having non viscous again non viscous it is having the flow property it will flow very easily wherever or whenever the viscosity of the fluid increases or it is having the higher value then only the fluid it uh, it does not move very easily so non viscous fluid definitely it will move very easily so non viscous it is not the right answer second uh, okay if the answer a is wrong then option c is also a uh, wrong because here they mention both a and b so option c is also wrong a and c we can't uh, consider as the answer then options b and d okay option b is incompressible if the fluid is incompressible if the fluid is incompressible the density of the fluid the density of the fluid is constant that is incompressible even though the density of the fluid is constant the fluid it will move okay and one more thing it may be the gas uh, here they mentioned fluid only it may be gas or liquid but incompressible only liquid right so we can't consider these also as answer and we'll come into the d having no motion of one fluid layer related to the other so the fluid layer it does not have any motion when compared with the other layers so option d is the answer it satisfies the pascal's law so option d is the answer for the fourth question the normal stress is the same in all directions at a point in a fluid when the fluid is having no motion of one fluid layer relative to the other option d is the answer then question number 5 head developed by a centrifugal pump depends on its head what is head what is head definite oh yes the energy per unit weight is nothing but the head so if we consider the pressure head pressure energy with respect to the unit weight that is nothing that gives the pressure head value then uh, velocity or uh, head how we will get kinetic energy per unit weight it will give the velocity head or kinetic head same like this we can calculate the potential head also potential energy divided by unit weight so head developed by a centrifugal pump depends on its again centrifugal pump so the head it will be uh, developed based on the speed of the pump so if the uh, speed of the pump is high if the speed of the pump is high the head it will be developed uh, in high level only if the speed of the pump is very low then the head it will be developed in the uh, lower height only okay so head developed by a centrifugal pump depends on its speed a is correct but c uh, option c is having the uh, both a and b and option d is neither a and b so neither a nor b okay we can't and we can choose c right so before going into that we'll discuss about the b also impeller diameter is yes, definitely the impeller portion the middle portion if it is too large okay then the head developed it will be less if the impeller is too small then the head developed it will be high so head developed by a centrifugal pump depends on its speed and impeller diameter so option c is the answer both a and b so the fifth question head developed by a centrifugal pump depends on its speed oh sorry uh, depends on its both a and b option c is the answer question number 6 hydraulic mean depth dm 
for a circular pipe of diameter d flowing full is 0.25 d for a circular channel at dm equal to 0.3 d gives the condition for the maximum hydraulic mean depth so we'll discuss about we'll discuss this one in the open channel and wherever we have the weighted perimeters and most economical section point we'll discuss about this hydraulic mean depth right this hydraulic mean depth it just gives the uh, term uh, depth term uh, wherever and how long the water uh, or liquid or fluid is filled so that is nothing but the hydraulic mean depth right so hydraulic mean depth for a circular pipe of diameter d flowing full is 0.25 d okay uh, for a circular channel at dm equal to 0.3 gives the condition for the maximum so this one we'll discuss in the most economical section so in the most economical section we will derive the uh, geometric uh, level okay most uh, economical or most beneficial geometrical section to get the uh, maximum velocity or uh, uh, maximum velocity only okay so if we come into the answers part flow rate mean velocity both a and b neither a nor b so mean velocity option b hydraulic mean depth for a circular pipe of diameter d circular diameter uh, pipe of diameter d flowing full is 0.25 d for a circular channel at dm equal to 0.3 d gives the condition for the maximum mean velocity okay so option c uh, sorry option d is the answer for the sixth question the head loss in turbulent flow in a pipe varies so generally loss of head h suffix f or h suffix l it will be the having the direct relationship between the velocity to the power n the two turbulent flow and laminar flow whatever it may be we will consider that n is equal to 2 then only the velocity profile it will give the parabolic term so the head loss in turbulent flow in a pipe varies first one is velocity velocity only but it has the power value as velocity squared okay option b then we will check the c and d also sometimes we may have both a and b like that right so c is inversely as the square of diameter inversely means one divided by velocity squared then fourth one is inversely of as the velocity one by b so all together option b as velocity square is the answer the head loss in turbulent flow in a pipe varies as velocity square option b is the answer for the seventh question eighth question most commonly used joint in the underground pipelines is the in the underground pipelines is the sleeve joint coupling and uh, flange then last one is expansion joint right okay first we'll uh, move into the sleeve joints sleeve joint again it is the broader pack it will uh, connect the two types of pipes two different uh, pipes coupling we'll use one coupling type of things only and flange is also same like that but you will we'll use nuts and bolts but sleeves all together collar type whole thing it will cover uh, for the sm smallest length expansion joint that pipe itself will uh, heat that one and will make that one to expand and we will uh, insert one pipe into the other pipe one so most commonly used joint okay all the four joints we can use but the condition is uh, underground pipelines so underground pipelines same like our ground pipeline or uh, ground level or surface level we can't uh, what is that examine that one we can't inspect that one regularly and if any fault comes also we can't change it very easily so expansion joint definitely we can't go the leak it will not occur it should not occur very easily 
option D it will not come flange and coupling again it does not give that much uh, uh, what is it coverage for the entire pipe length but this sleeve joint it will cover the maximum part of the pipe okay uh, particular length so the sleeve joint it will be beneficial uh, ben, uh, what is that uh, applicable while considering this underground pipeline so most commonly used joint in the underground pipelines is the sleeve joint option a is the answer for question number eight <coughs> schedule number then uh, question number nine schedule number of a pipe of a pipe which is a measure of its wall thickness uh, wall thickness is given by okay of a wall thickness is given by the answers are 1000 p by s 100 uh, 100 p by s then 1000 s by p 10000 p by s okay here itself i mentioned the answer is a but before going into this uh, a uh, final uh, finalizing this a we'll discuss about the schedule schedule number what is schedule number s we all know that the schedule number the schedule number indicates approximate value of the expression 1000 p by s right 1000 p by s where p is the service pressure and s is the allowable stress okay and uh, both the things it will be uh, expressed in pounds per square inch okay whatever it may be leave it but in the definition term itself the schedule number indicates approximate value of the expression 1000 p by s right so here check the answers 1000 p by s it is in the option a so ninth question schedule number of a pipe which is measure of its wall thickness is given by 1000 p by s okay option a is the answer for the question number nine then 10th question, the net positive suction head of a centrifugal pump is defined as the sum of the velocity head and the pressure head at D. Okay, what is net positive suction head? Again, the net positive suction head, it gives just a relationship at the suction point only, at the suction point only. So the net positive suction head of a centrifugal pump is defined as a sum of velocity head and the pressure head at the discharge option A and uh, discharge minus vapor pressure of the liquid at the discharge temperature option D, it will not be the answers. These things, it will not be the answers. Then the options, it will be in the B and C only. Okay b again it gives just suction only at the suction no and c suction minus vapor pressure of the liquid at suction temperature right so definitely the option c will be the answer so because at the suction point the answer is in brief so option uh, c is the answer uh, for the 10th question the net positive suction head of a centrifugal pump is defined as the sum of the velocity head and the pressure head at the suction minus vapor pressure of the liquid at suction pressure okay. option c is the answer for question number 10 so all together okay in this session we discussed about the fluid mechanics basic concepts okay what is fluid then how it is differing from the solid and uh, we discussed about the fluid mechanics fluid statics fluid dynamics fluid kinematics and all the properties also we discussed very br briefly right in this particular portion what you have to keep in the consideration means first thing you all should know about the differences between the fluid and solid you may get uh, one more question in that and next thing is fluid properties geometric flow and fluid properties 
okay these things one thing you have to uh, read the definition for parts and one more uh, in most of the times which one it will be helpful means unit and unit conversion in the next session we'll discuss about the unit and unit conversion but unit of uh, the, uh, the si unit specifically si unit because in all the uh, countries we we'll use the will follow the si unit only so the problem while solving also whatever the unit you may have you have to convert all the units to si units only okay so all the units to si units only so all the things geometric property flow property fluid property all the things you have to read the definition very clearly and the next thing is you have to clear in the uh, unit and unit conversion parts again and this fluid properties definition and the unit and unit conversions okay then fluid statics uh, while reading the question you have to read the conditions very clearly okay so here itself we uh, we clearly uh, saw the pascal law question only but in different terms right so wherever you read the question you have to read each and every word you have to write the conditions one by one very clearly then you have to interlink that conditions then only you can find the clear and correct answer otherwise the answer it will be wrong and that to in gate uh, exams we have the negative marks for the answers right wrong answers for the wrong answers we have the 0.25 marks deduction for the wrong answers so you have to clearly read the each and every word of the question and you have to write the conditions what are all the conditions we have in the question one by one very clearly and we have to interlink that question uh, sorry conditions then only you have to click the answers okay then uh, again uh, in this also we have to uh, get the atmospheric pressure value uh, at uh, water head level or uh, uh, mercury level and uh, unit conversion also you should know that what is uh, tar what is uh, pascal what is bar everything you have to keep it in mind and apart from this okay apart from this you just uh, clear in the okay you just clear in the uh, fluid dynamics part okay euler's equation bernoulli's equation that to bernoulli's equation and the uh, bernoulli's equation will use for every system okay or for every system we can apply this bernoulli's equation to find the pressure value okay to find the pressure value or datum uh, head level variations so for all other things we will use this bernoulli's equation so you all people go through the bernoulli's equation also and uh, based on that uh, we'll have the continuity equation concept right q1 is equal to q2 so in that part also you may have uh, most of the questions so continuity equation mass law of mass conservation so mass in is equal to mass out volume in is equal to volume out uh, volumetric rate is equal to uh, one is equal to volumetric rate two like that we can uh, what is that we can solve all kind of problems where the pipe network it is there okay pipe is in the network position so if we know the uh, pressure and uh, what is that if we know the area and velocity of one system one side and we can find out the other uh, two sides or other sides velocity and area okay based on the continuity equation okay and one more thing flow types also you people read that based on the conditions or based on the modes how we are classifying the flow of fluids one is steady flow and an unsteady flow based on the time and uniform and non uniform flow based on the length and uh, incompressible and compressible based on the density based on the rotation rotational fluid flow and irrotational fluid flow and based on the reynolds number we can classify the laminar flow turbulent flow and transition flow and based on the critical uh, what is that based on the fraud number we can classify the critical flow subcritical flow supercritical flow based on the dimensions of the fluid flow one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional fluid flow like that don't stop in this particular point itself 
you just brief your basic concepts and you just interlink all the concepts with one another definitely you can solve all kind of problems and and after this you people read the pump and turbine also pump and turbine concept also you people read it very clearly what is centrifugal pump what is reciprocating pump which pump it will be useful for the uh, lower head which pump it will be useful for the higher head like that you people read the pump and turbine very clearly okay so uh, with this i'll conclude this uh, today's session we'll meet in the next session i hope you people find a good clear idea through this session okay all the best you all do well and once again i thank um, aact stream prerna stream uh, this is a scheme uh, which is specifically designed for the scst students to help the scst students for the preparation of higher education so i thank uh, aact prerna on behalf of the erod sengundar engineering college Thank you. Thank you one and all. All the best.